name is Carolyn Trump. I'm 84 years old. My husband was in industry and in management, which he managed to do without college education. And he worked at, in the evenings for an architectural firm checking drawings. Um, he loved doing that, but you couldn't make a living at that. But his, uh, he hated his management job in industry, which it was his goal, but when he got there, he just disliked it. So one night when he came home, I asked him what he'd really like to do with the rest of his life, and he said, I would really like to buy a hardware store, but it means you go back to work. Well, our son, who surprised us after 13 years, we gave up having children and we had a baby boy. So he was only 11 when we bought the hardware store. We just looked around until we found one that was a friendly atmosphere and included our living quarters because all the money we had was tied up in our home. So that brought us to Solon. So my folks bought this store in 1975, Dean and Carolyn Trump. Um, I think I was uh, 11 when we bought the store. So, and then as I got a little older, I worked full-time in the store along with my dad. Uh, we did glass and screen repair, uh, worked in the lawnmower shop, uh, did plumbing repair when dad was alive. Um, as I got a little older, uh, I did most of the plumbing repair. Dad did the lawn and garden stuff and the glass and screen repair. And then we lost my dad now 22 years ago. And since that time, why mom and I are uh, co-owners of the store now. She uh, runs the store proper. I run the lawnmower shop and do the glass and screen repair. We do vinyl replacement windows. My name is Dolores Casper and I'm 81 years old. The way I ended up at the hardware store was my husband coming to town to buy some things and he didn't, didn't like Iowa City. He always come to, went to a smaller town and he went in the hardware store and Carolyn was down on her knees trying to do something, cleaning, and, and the way he was, he was always had a joke or something and he said, what in the hell are you doing down there, Carolyn? And uh, so she said, well, he said, I, you, you need more help around here. And she said, well, where are you going to get good help? Well, he said, my wife. She said, send her in. So he comes home and he says, I got you a job. I said, great, where do I go? <laughs> so then it was to the hardware store, and I went the next day, and I'm still there. So amazing. It was the best thing. Before we moved to Solon, we had lived in Cedar Rapids for 25 years, and we both... Um, were employed there. I grew up in Lisbon and my husband was from Mechanicsville. My mother warned me about those boys from that town to stay away from them. So I just grabbed one and married him. And it turned out well. He was a very nice gentleman. As far as the family, uh... I've known him since I was a little kid. Dean uh, Trump has been was a, a huge part of my life um, as far as just going in uh, on a daily basis and he always had a smile for you. He was such an influence in my life that uh, my son's named after him. Um, Dean always had a pretty good sense of good and bad, right and wrong. Um, and I think too often in our world today, people miss that. I had the good pleasure of meeting the Trumps back in 1975. One of the things that I was supposed to do as a first-time banker right out of college was get involved in communities and organizations within that community. And I joined the Solon Optimist Club in 1975. Well, guess who was on the Optimist Club at that time? A new member on his own, and that was Dean Trump. And uh, of course, he was Marion uh, Al Dean, but we called him Dean. My husband always, um was of the opinion that if you're going to sell something and it needed servicing, you best be able to service it as well. So we have lawn mowers and we have snow blowers, we have um, tillers, and um, we also have gas and electric trimmers. And um, we sell them, we also service them. and. Um, it's turned into a very large business. We also sell, or we also repair and service ones that are different brands than we sell. And we probably, in a year's time, we probably service about anywhere from 350 to maybe 400 machines per year. 
and I know at this point we're over 200 and um, still at it. Uh, we, when you think you're, you're caught up, that's when everybody brings theirs in. Well, I think the, the biggest thing that we offer is if you buy a lawnmower from me, we'll pick it up and deliver it back to you when you need service work done at no charge uh, for the lifetime of the mower. Uh, for everyone else, there's a fee, obviously, because we can't do it for nothing. But uh, uh, So people call in, they tell us they need their lawnmower picked up and repaired or serviced or whatever. Uh, we then will call them, we'll go pick the mower up, bring it in here, we do whatever service work they need done to it, and then return it back to them and give them a bill for the service. We've always enjoyed uh, being able to pick up the phone and say, Carolyn, you got a 3 8 inch uh, nut with a square head and a, but I need about 2 inches in length. Yeah, I think we do, Don. Come on in. And that's the type of service we've grown accustomed to. Oh, just, just that, you know, I knew, Carol, I knew uh, Carolyn's husband, Dean, and he could fix anything. Now their son's kind of involved with that with the lawnmowers. And, you know, in a little town, you know, you might pay a little more for it, but the service is worth twice. You know, just to be able to have that relationship in a small, you know, a small town hardware store. You don't see many of them anymore. And the people that work here work hard, you know. They have a lot to deal with, a tremendous inventory, you know. They're honest, good people. When we do come up, we used to get kerosene from, kerosene from them a lot because of our uh, power washer at work. Um, and we'd come and get kerosene, they have to go out to the garage and get it. And a lot of times they'd have me stay in the store just in case somebody came in to tell people that they'd be right back in. We also sell... Um windows, new windows, and we repair glass and screen. And the same is true there. We think we're caught up and then somebody will bring in 13 at a time and we're just bogged down, but that's good. That's what keeps us here. So, and then they have the repair shop as, as far as the lawn mowers and the um, snow blowers. And we used them for the window service too, as far as repairing windows at our house. And I decided to shop locally uh, to uh, get my new windows and doors from him and and I was brought up that you do business locally if you can. The uh, the Soul and Hardware store has always really been a special place um, just to, uh, even a place to just and stop and visit but about anything that you need they either have or can get. Uh, the two ladies, I've known uh, Carolyn and Dolores for 35 years. And uh, we've always tried to purchase local because we're local. I usually walk to work every day and some and, uh, sometime I don't. I drive the car if we need it for a special purpose or something. And, and uh, but there's, I mean, I do so many varied things that I just don't have one particular job. I can pay the I pay the bills and keep track of all that, and I do all the statements and and uh, put the orders up. The order comes in on a Thursday, and so it probably takes me till Friday. No, no, about Saturday or Monday before I get done with the order. Depends how much we have. It all has to be marked and put away, and I enjoy that part. It's like Christmas, opening up a big box and and seeing all this stuff in there. And oh, did I order that? Yeah, I did, but. And I enjoy that part. So, and whatever needs to be done. I mean, there's just no special job for me. I just do anything and everything, so. Since we are an old-fashioned hardware store, we do have one particularly um, uh, attention-getting cash register. And um, there's no electricity hooked to it. It's all just punch in the numbers and pull the cranks. And my husband always told me that when it failed us, that I should replace it and get modern. Well, we've been there 43 years and it's never failed. And it's very unique. Um, it's, they tell me it's very valuable, um, but we get comments. People just stand there and, and they're just amazed at it that we're still using it and children um, just get real quiet and watch it. I guess we have a really unique cash register. It's old, very old. We don't know how old it is. And, and uh, that's probably the main topic of the conversation when new people come in. Oh my gosh, you still use that thing? 
Yes, we still use it. It doesn't use electricity, which is wonderful. And, and you have to punch your numbers in and pull the crank and the door opens. And it works well and we can work when the lights are off. We just stay, we keep the store open and we sell flashlights where the other stores have to lock up because their computers won't work. So because of our location on Main Street, we have Ragbri and we have Beef Days. And then Ragbri, of course, and we had that three, four years, three, two or three years, I don't know which it was now, but somehow or other it rained, which they didn't know, they come in right away for ponchos and umbrellas and whatever. And somehow we got started on the garbage bag bit. So here I was cutting the head out and arms out and said, here's your poncho. So we'd try them on, fit them. Nope, it needs a little bit here, down. Okay. So we clipped that out and then they say, how much you want? And I said, oh, nothing. So they'll throw out a dollar. And one guy threw out $5 because he was really happy. He had a covering and, and so it went up and down the street. They were telling people go there and while it's raining, get you a bag. So here they'd come. They said, oh, we heard it down the street. I said, oh, thanks a lot. <laughs> so, but that was very fun. It was real interesting and the people would talk and they thought it was something too. So they'll probably always remember Solon by the lady that in the hardware store that cut the bags up. As beef days go, goes, we're open on Friday uh, for as long as they need us to be open while they get everything set up and ready. And then we just don't open on Saturday and we just plain enjoy beef days. Well, compared to the big box stores, uh, Soul and Hardware has a lot of benefits that way. Uh, box store, you go in, well, I don't know where it is. They'll ask the clerk and they don't know where nothing is. They run around the store for half an hour looking for an item. They come in and we tell them where it is and sh go over and show them and they can pick out what, that, what they want. And they really appreciate that part of it because they say, well, we, can we couldn't find anything so-and-so. And so that's what they like is probably one-on-one -on -one contact with a person to tell them where everything is and give them ideas and stuff like that. So maybe sometime we offer too many ideas, but anyway. <laughs> uh, it, it's still good to have a hardware store here. I stop here quite often. They always seem to have what I need at least 95% of the time. Somehow in a small store like this, they have what I'm looking for anyway. Well, the Solon Hardware Store, I, I think it's something every little town should have. It's, uh, they, I have people in my own grocery store and they're asking for something. I may not have it and I always end up saying, you know what, let's call the hardware store. I bet you nine out of ten times they have what you're looking for. By gosh, they have candle wicks. And so up we go, call up there. They'll get, they'll say, yeah, we got one. Okay. So I'll send the customer up to them and they're happy as a clam. I run the Lee's Ag Clinic, another business just on the south end of town. And I find it very rewarding and uh, profitable for me to come up to the Solon Hardware instead of running down to Iowa City or up to Cedar Rapids. And it's, uh, it makes a it ease for my business. Even though there are big box stores, um, we still get our share of customers in there that appreciate the service we give. Um, if, if they need us, they know that we not only are open from 8 to 6 in the daytime, all they have to do is knock on my door, call, and we'll get it any time for whatever they may need. And um, people don't want to lose us. We hear that daily that, gee, we don't want to ever lose this hardware store. So um, we do all we can to serve the customer. As the mayor of Solon, uh, having a store like this on our main street is, is huge. It brings uh, the walk-in traffic. It brings the people that may just be passing through town or camping uh, that uh, need something and they're able to go in there and be greeted uh, with a small town feeling. And then that maybe encourages them to stop in at the Legion or go to a restaurant. Um, but it is a, uh, a draw, if you will, other than a restaurant. We, we do get some requests after hours. We've always emphasized to people that we live upstairs above the store. 
and that we're, if we're home, we're always willing to go down to the store if we feel we can help them. And we have opened a lot of times. Um, and if, if I'm not home, um, my son Tom is, and if, I'm, if they can't get it, either of us, Dolores will go. And uh, rather than people having to drive someplace, we just go down and get it for them. And, but they don't abuse it. <laughs> you know, they only do it if it's an emergency. That's what makes places like this unique, our personalities. It's not necessarily about the business or the shingle on the wall. It's more about the people that are able to help you when you do need help. You know, if it's eight o'clock at night, your sump pump doesn't work, you can always call Tom and he'll be there to help you. And then sometimes when they're busy, they'll throw me the keys and say, you know where it's at, go get it. And you know, how many places like that, you know, are you going to uh, have that opportunity? So <laughs> it's, uh, it's kind of, it can be uh, comical as well as, uh, you know, a mutual friendship. Well, we get a lot of requests. People a lot of times ask for this new modern stuff that's on TV. We don't go for that. We just get the basic everyday stuff. And if we don't have it on the shelf, we stock it. We can order it for them. And if it's something we think will sell, we stock it. And we, then we just take it kind of from there as to how we, what we have in the store. And we've had put a lot of new things in. So, And then if it's after evening, if they can't get Carolyn, they'll call me and I'll come up and let them in. And, but that don't happen very often, but occasionally. So we're glad to do it. We're kind of a central place in town where they come and we get a lot of people in there that um, have information and have opinions on different items and they talk about it. And we listen and we visit, but um, we're mighty careful about the opinions we give because it's a small town and word gets around and um, so we don't give out our opinions. There are times when it's stressful, but we um, love what we do. We love the hardware store and um, we, we are particularly fond of our customers. We, we like to help them. So we don't really feel stress. Um, until it's all over and we realize we had it, but, but we enjoy doing it. Running the hardware store a lot of times can be quite stressful. I mean, people get in a hurry and anxious, and, and if you don't have something done or don't, they get real anxious and get mad because you don't, can't get it there right now because they got a mow like today, and they brought it in today, but they mow, won it yesterday. That's the way it goes. These ladies, they just, they put their heart and soul into this business, and it's just been wonderful to deal with them over all these years. You know, I started out kind of with a raw dog and, you know, and I've been learning for 20 years on how to just deal with people and, you know, and operate a business in a small town. You're, you're surrounded by all these big stores only 10, 15, 20 miles away. And these ladies have managed to capture their business and grow their clientele over all these years. And they keep them and people just love to come in and, you know, chat and, maybe hear a joke or two or share one with them and, and it's, it's just wonderful to hear them giggle. And they're very friendly and happy-go-lucky people. It's a pleasure to come up here once in a while. Sometimes I say, hi, gals, and they'll say, oh no, it's Lee again, you know. <laughs> I think the one of the best things I like is just the personality of both ladies are so willing to go out of their way to help and um, recommend if if they if they can't get it uh, right away and you need it, they're not afraid to say you know go across the street or um, ask if there's something that that you need. Well, I think one of the charms of the store and and the thing I hear from most people is they love to come in and converse with Mom and Dolores, our bookkeeper. Um, Dolores has been with us for. 
for 40 years now. And uh, between the two of them, they're up front. Um, there are uh, two of the finest people you'll ever want to meet. Um, people love to come in. They love to pick on my mom because uh, mom gives it right back to them. Dolores is one of the kindest people, and, and both of them will do anything they can to help you um, when you come in the store. So I think people enjoy coming in as much for the, the conversation and the camaraderie as they do for what they purchase in the store. It's just a wonderful little thing that they got going on here. And those two ladies, I think they're probably the best of friends over all these years. They'll have lunch together, they'll go take a little small vac vacation together, and it's just good to see that friendship in a, in a small town like that. So we, Carol and I do a lot together. Um, in the evenings we're both widows so we just do go someplace and eat and then we look forward to our three-day weekend but it isn't but we leave like on a Saturday noon and then we're gone all Sunday and we come back Sunday noon we just go down to Quincy and everybody says what do you do at Quincy well we read our books and relax and that's what we do we look forward to that so this year we only got two trips down there. Solon's changed a lot in the last 10-15 years N new people constantly um, which is very nice and they patronize us, and a lot of days we don't hardly know any locals, but they're all new people. They say, well, I live here, and just come in, and, or else I live in Ely, and I didn't know you were here, so I thought we'd stop in and check around and see what we can find, and so that's the way it goes about every day. Typical small town Iowa. It's kind of a, a dying breed. A lot of these little towns are all drying up and stores are empty, but these guys have figured out a way to make it work. And it's just through hard work, I think, you know, and they, they persevere. Because Main Street is so important in small towns, you see it in Iowa, one of the few states that was having declining population. Now we just have very small growth. I think we just now reached three million people. But in small town America throughout, you see boarded up windows, uh, businesses closing, uh, Main Streets that used to be thriving, virtually uh, tumbleweed in some case. And we feel that Solon has averted that through the uh, long hard work of the Trumps, keeping the hardware store going. We have some customers that 43 years ago they were still with us, and I can't believe how they've aged. <laughs> because I've aged too, you know. <laughs> but I, I see it in other people, and I think, my gosh, that I was here, and I look a lot different than I did that long ago, too. It just, um, it's amazing, the, the things, um, the people that still are shopping with us or the ones that have passed on or the new ones that we have and the generations we've gone through. We're in at least three generations since we bought that store. New people bring their little kids in and it's very fascinating to see the little ones. And right now I think we're going through our fourth generation of people that brought their kids in, their parents and grandparents and on down the line. And, and uh, it's really amazing. And nowadays the new parents, they bring their children in whatever size they are. And now about two and three year olds, they've got smart. They know we got suckers to give away. And so they'll look at that sucker dish and see if they could get one. And sometimes mom will say no, or dad, and <laughs> say no, not now. Well, you can take one home, okay. But some of them run up the counter and said, I need a sucker. <laughs> So it's kind of a drawing part for the children, and we enjoy the comments. And uh, On Wednesday and Saturday nights, we'd always come to town. That was a big thing. We'd get to come in, and we'd see friends and walk the streets up and down and look in the stores or whatever. And, and uh, then we always got a nickel, which was a big thing. When you, before you go, we had it early, but we had to check the stores out for their candy and their pop or whatever. And then before we got ready to go, then we purchased our item because we wanted to be sure that's what it was. So sometime my sister would get a pop and I'd get a pop and then we'd split it and we'd maybe pour them together so that we'd have a new flavor. And then we'd have to have our bubble gum, which was really nice. I mean, we chewed gum then, bubble gum. Then at night I'd put it on the bedpost, as they say. Next morning we'd start chewing again. It lasted a long time too. Nowadays they don't, so a lot of difference in bubble gum. <laughs> But we did that. <laughs> People ask why I don't retire, because I am 84 years old, but I've had a dose of um, 
I had heart surgery and I, it took me a long time to get well. But I decided at that point I was going to get back on my feet, go back to work, because this is my life. And I don't want to sit around and be a vegetable. <laughs> so I'll stick with it. Dolores feels the same way. And uh, we love what we do and enjoy the people, enjoy the business. And we don't really feel stress. I really enjoy my work and everybody keeps saying, why don't you retire your age? You're getting 81, you're 81, you should retire. No, I don't want to retire. What would I do at home? I'd probably rot, but um, nobody, you know, I don't have any children, so nobody come and see me and nobody call me. So I'd look at four walls and I can't stand that. I've been, I worked all my life since I've been 12 years old. So I guess it just gets in your blood and that's what you do. But um, that's why I keep working because I enjoy the people so much. and. No two days are alike, and always something different happens, or just to visit with somebody different every day. It's, it, I really enjoy that part of the work, and so that's why I hate to quit. So, I, like I say, they'll probably pick me up, and I'll be there, and they'll pick me up, and carry me out, and I'll be done. <laughs> My husband, this was his dream to have a hardware store, and he was with us and worked for 21 years, and we pretty much have stuck to his way of thinking because. It worked and it was honest and um, he loved the hardware store and so do we. It's Dean's dream come true and we've kept it going since we lost him and I think that it will continue on with Tom. Um, I don't know for how long because by the, if I keep staying he's going to be retirement age by the time I'm gone. <laughs> You know, so long as Mom and Dolores are here and want to continue to do it, we're going to continue to do it. Um, you know, I'm I'm starting to get closer to retirement age as well. I've asked Mom if she has any interest in in retiring or slowing down, and at this point, she has no interest in in slowing down or quitting. So we'll continue to do it uh, for the foreseeable future. Um, you know, when mom's gone, we'll have to reevaluate and decide what we're going to do. Uh, hopefully I can find somebody else that would be willing to continue on with what we're doing. Um, but I really don't know what the future will hold for us. I don't know. I, I hope somebody buys it and keeps it going. It it's, doesn't bring in a fortune, but money isn't everything. There are so many friends and customers that, that um, I just, it's very rewarding uh, in many ways. So I wouldn't trade my life. It's wonderful. <laughs> well, many. Um, so uh, Terry Brosh is the is the local uh, undertaker or was. Um, I think he's now sold out. But uh, Terry would uh, come in the shop every so often. He always had um, uh, things that he needed to have worked on. And so when he would come in the shop, um, my dad would always look over his shoulder at him and say, "Not today, Terry." <laughs> So that was one of my favorite stories of my dad and, and the interaction with Terry Brock. Having mouse problems, I'll show you. This is the original ones that we had before, and they do catch mice, but a little harder. I'll show you the new ones that are. These are fantastic. And all you do is push this back and you put your bait here. And talking a voice of experience, what I did was I found out I had mice in the back, and so uh, they got the, oh, Henry candy bars, okay. So anyway, I took a, one that they ate on, I took and put it on the, 
um, baited them up with it, and I caught six just like that. And they, these are fantastic. They're a little more money, but they do the job better. So try them. Thank you very much.